Hey everybody, we are back again with another video. This time we're doing some basic level blocking for your 2D platformer games. So I've got an empty scene here set up with just a main camera and we're using uh, my project Sweet Pea as a template. So I've already got a bunch of nice artwork in here. Uh, I'm gonna start off by tossing a square into the scene and this is gonna be most of what we're doing here. I'm going to stretch it out. Uh, you can transform it there by pressing T. And if you don't already have a square, you can just go down, right click in your assets, and then uh, head up to Create Sprite. I'm going to drop another square in here, and I'm going to tag it as ground so that our player character recognizes that as ground. I'm going to tag our larger square as bad. So you can set up your tags as whatever you like. Obviously, it's just going to work with uh, your scripts and telling your player or whatever how to interact with each other. So go ahead and toss this little sweet pea in here. You can kind of color code things a little bit to be able to keep track of stuff. It really depends on how complex you're going. We're just going to build a little strip here, so it's really just to get the idea. But we see we got green good, red bad. Pretty simplistic. Now we can duplicate this with control D while it's selected. And just scooch it right over, and we got another platform. Actually, we can change up the physics here. I'm going to change the tag to bounce. And then we need to give it a bouncy material. Ah, looks like I skipped a step. So you're going to want to go down to Component, Physics 2D, uh, Box Collider 2D. For this particular one, we're going to have it bouncy. I'm going to go back and add in my box colliders for these. Make sure it's marked box collider 2D because that'll, uh, you start getting things complex. That'll become a real problem if you add the wrong sort of box colliders to your objects. Alright, and for the bad square, I'm going to mark it as a trigger, just so uh, the player doesn't actually impact it. He'll just go right through that, and it will register that he's hit the the no-no area. And I've got it set up for him to force him back to the beginning uh, where he started, so nice and simple. We're just going to duplicate a couple of these platforms, move them around. So we got... Solid material, uh, bad material, and then bouncy material. That looks pretty okay. Alright, and as you can see, already playable. Not very fancy, but uh, we we are blocking out a level, so it's you're getting your platforms in there, you're getting your the shape of everything, and then we can go back and fancy it up a little bit. Now, obviously, your character is gonna uh, move a little bit differently, um, so that's gonna affect how you place your platforms. Uh, everybody, every character has a different jump and whatnot, so just keep those things in mind gonna start to pretty it up. I'm gonna toss a nice little background in here. That's gonna be a problem if I scale the camera. There we go. As you can see, my organization skills aren't the best. I've got uh, all sorts of different file types all over the place. Oh, 
Alright, we're gonna toss some lava in there to take care of most of the foreground. So now we essentially have um, a visual representation, like why is it bad to hit that area? Why is it bad for your character to fall? Um, you want a for it to be apparent when you look at it. It's like, oh, obviously we don't want to go there. So in this case, lava. All right, this is looking pretty good. I'm just going to adjust some of the scale to get a little bit more save time there. A little bit more of a fall. We're able to have some more ups and downs that way. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to start throwing in uh, representations for the platform. So we have the actual physics for the platform set up, but again, we need something that makes sense, feels right in the scene. Um, in this case, I'm going to go with uh, these crazy little pillars here. Pretty sure I made it in Blender. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to make sure it conforms to the shape of the platform. It doesn't hurt to have a little bit of extra platform run off on either side, just so you have a little bit of uh, the Roadrunner effect going. Helps people out a little bit. But if not, and you want to be brutal, then hey, go for it. And we're going to duplicate that again with Control D. I'm going to drag uh, this little platform up here, give it a little bit of variance. Alright, this is all looking pretty good so far. There we go, toss a mushroom in for the bouncy spot. And adjust the scale. While I'm doing that and giving the setting, if you got a minute, head on over to Steam and check out the demo for Sweet Pea. It's been uh, quite a bit of effort and quite a journey making it. And I would uh, love it if you checked it out. Let me know what you think, you know. All right, so I've adjusted the color, uh, the coloration on it a little bit just to uh, have it match the tone a little better. And now I'm going in with our original square platforms and just disabling the sprite renderer. Make sure you don't disable the whole object or you're going to run into problems there. All right, to give it a little bit more ambience and texture, we're going to toss in some clouds. Some invisible clouds. And I'm just going to duplicate these clouds. I've already got these guys as game objects set up 
to um, to drift essentially in the background so all I have to do is place them and they'll just kind of drift by Another cool technique as far as atmosphere for um, a 2D game like this, uh, something I like to do, is I'll make a gradient that sort of matches the tone, uh, kind of like how, how you'd want the lighting to interact with things. In this case, we want it sort of hot to cold from the lava. You place it over top of everything and then just scale down um, your alpha until you get something you like. It provides like a nice sense of atmosphere and I'm really into that. I, I'm, if you look at my game, that's most of the game is atmosphere. And just brutality. Alright, scale it up a little bit. Get it into a nice position. That's looking pretty good overall. Yeah, we're having our lava cut off. It's clipped by the camera. Shouldn't be too hard to adjust. Okay, another fun little thing we can do to add in a little bit more atmosphere is with my sort of atmosphere layer that I've put up here. I'm going to duplicate it and then attach that duplicate to it just by dragging and dropping it onto the original. We're going to hit Control 6, create a new animation, name it whatever you like. Go ahead and hit the little record button. And we're going to get a nice keyframe right there in that position. Go down for a ways. And then just shift it all the way over. So that's going to be really subtle, but it's going to create a nice sense of uh, motion in our atmosphere. I'm also going to slow the speed down as well. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now what we can do is start to throw in some decorative items. Take this nice tree, drop in a lamp. And we'll toss in a nice foreground item as well. Yeah, that's pretty perfect. Now I've got that, that particular piece of art I drew up in the grease pencil, but it, it was planned to be in the foreground, so I actually took it into uh, GIMP and then blurred it to give it that nice uh, sort of depth of field effect. Uh, again, I did that with this tree on the right here as well, so I have a blurred and unblurred version, and the one on the right is going to go up in front so that we get a nice depth of field effect.
and in scenes like this, uh, I tend to think that it looks more appealing if the things closer to the camera um, are a little darker. So I try to darken the things in the foreground. All right, now you can already see just from what we had to what we've gotten to in such a short period of time. Granted, uh, you know, the artwork was already done, and that does take a good chunk of time. But as you may have seen in some of my previous videos, you can make artwork however you like with uh, anything from, uh, you know, advanced 3D stuff to drawing on a whiteboard or a pen and a piece of paper. Anyway... That's my pretty quick and easy technique for 2D level blocking for your platformer. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, sub, share if you can. Take it easy. Bye.